Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Darsh Shah. And I'm Dr. Ultima Shraja. And welcome to Medicine Redefined. A podcast where we will explore the often overlooked but necessary components of health, what we consider to be the fundamentals. We will investigate topics and practices that can give you and your patients the best chance to optimize a healthy lifestyle. It's time to move the needle forward and put the health back in healthcare. Welcome to an episode of The Progress Note. In medicine, the progress note is a medical record that documents a patient's clinical status or achievements during their care. It typically consists of four components, the subjective data, the objective data, the assessment, and lastly, the plan. It essentially is a systematic review in a point of time. Our goals with these episodes are to highlight mainstream practices, take a deeper dive, and approach polarized topics with nuance. While advancement is always happening in medicine, rethinking data as well as our beliefs is a rare occurrence. Join us as we continue to make progress, hold ourselves accountable, and redefine medicine. All right, welcome back everyone to another progress note. This will be number three, and Altamash and I are gonna be talking all about alkaline diets and alkaline water and what it means to be alkaline. Um, Altamash, what are your takes? Uh, I've quite a few, but before we get started, I, I, I must know, wh- why are we even talking about this? What, what was the inspiration? I think that's uh, important to kind of set the stage a little bit. Sure, absolutely. So there's kind of three instances that I can come up with where I've heard about alkaline and actually kind of wanted to look more into it. So the first is probably about two to three years ago when I'm going to 7-Eleven and just, you know, or Wawa and just trying to get water, um, you start to see these brands pop up that say, hey, try this alkaline water be more hydrated. So interesting. You say, okay, what, you know, what does that mean? Um, the second instance is I remember my mother-in-law actually, you know, through WhatsApp, uh, sending me like a link saying, Hey, should I buy this water filter, um, that alkalinizes, I can't even say that word, uh, your water. Hmm. And obviously there's been a big push. People are more health conscious in terms of the water they're drinking, you know, Berkey filters, reverse osmosis. But now there's this whole branch of water filters that, um, are alkaline. And then the third is, uh, for people who really know me, I despise Tom Brady. Um, and so he's known to push his TB12 uh, plan, right? His workouts, his diet. And one of the main components of his diet, aside from being like no nightshades and anti-inflammatory, is an alkaline diet. And I had to call BS. I thought I was like, this is an alkaline gate with a deflate gate with all the other gates he's had. Um, and so I was like, we got to do an episode on this. <laughs> God, you sound like such a hater. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm with it though. You know, it's interesting because this thing, it's kind of like weaves in and out of mainstream health and wellness space. And and I guess it's uh, it's just one of those things as, as more and more people come into it, maybe this is something that's just uh, such a basic thing, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, in, our, in our lives that we, <laughs> you know, you, you tend to be like, okay, how can I optimize my water? And listen, we're partly guilty of this because we, we've had an episode discussing how to exactly optimize our water. Shout out Tracy Dews, oh, yeah. um, who actually I think did talk about this on hers. Um, so we'll, we'll try to find that and link it as well. But I think when I think about how this nonsensical fad kind of even started, it, it, it preys upon some of the terminology, right? And, and the video that you sent me, mm-hmm. this one YouTube video, which I think this guy does a great job, maybe we can find that as well, that they use a the terminology that yeah. acids, right? Acids are, are bad for you. Um, and acids have uh, a negative charge, right? So this is going back to our chemistry and, and the negativity cannot be right. good for your body and bases are, are positive. <laughs> and you know, for those getting into chemistry here, and so the positive sign therefore must be good. And then you have some really well-known celebrities who who back it up and, and they kind of say, oh, you have all these benefits. What's interesting, I saw, I think it was a meme or somewhere on Instagram that there was a celebrity person who actually sells a lot and she like puts lemon in her, um, a, you know, a, alkaline water, which is like, <laughs> what are we, what the hell? Um, and those who understand that, you know, lemon is, is more of an acidic thing and you're completely it's offsetting acidic. it. And, right. <laughs> and... So all that being said, and I think from a scientific perspective, there there is a little bit premise, right? I think that alkaline diets, kind of mm-hmm. what you're alluding to, they have shown to have some benefit for very specific ailments, right? Um, and Correct. 
and so naturally people think okay well if it works for one thing it must work for other things not understanding pathophysiology and how it can be grossly different when you go from one disease state to another disease state and and i think lastly people will say a lot of the the western diet the standard american diet particularly contains high amount of acidic foods right um, common ones that come to mind is mm-hmm. we have a lot of like meat products and whatnot uh, a lot of coffee uh, myself included guilty of that and so to counteract that of course we need to put more alkalotic foods or basic foods into our body and so right. i think from that aspect i do get it but it's just a, a very poor understanding that um just because you're ingesting and how the body body process it might be completely different um not to mention how every single organ has their own and the blood has its own stuff that we're going to talk about mm-hmm. but um but I think that's that's my takeaway of why the hell we're even in this mess and why we're here talking about it. Absolutely. All right. So let's 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 break it down, right? So when, when we say alkaline, Altamash, I think you did a great job talking about basics and, and positive, right? The cations. So pH is on a spectrum, right? And so seven is neutral. Anything below seven would be acidic, and anything above seven would be basic or alkaline. So in order to go above seven, you need to add minerals such as magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium, right? These are things we're going to be talking about. Um, And because those have a positive charge, you're going to increase that pH. So there's a difference between becoming alkaline, like your body actually becoming alkaline, versus ingesting alkaline water or alkaline food, right? I think that's where the marketing likes to trip people up, is that, hey, this is alkaline, and people think, oh, I'm going to make my body alkaline. But we know that's not true, given that the human body would probably die if it just all of a sudden became more alkaline, right? Like our pH is very tightly regulated. And you just talked about this, how different organs, such as our stomach, will actually be more in an acidic pH, right? So it can break down foods. But, you know, you've done your ICU time. Like we ran, what, human body's like a 7.4. And even if you go like 0.2, you're like in danger zone, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you can touch on that. Yeah, absolutely. I think... For those who don't know, 7.4 is kind of the ballpark. You know, a, a normal pH, what we learn in medical school, is anywhere from 7.35 to 7.45. Um, and so 7.4 for ease. But yeah, uh, in the acute state, if somebody goes down to 7.1, 7.2, that's that's an admission to the ICU. You buy yourself a bed there. You know, over, with chronic uh, disease states, um, you know, like diabetes or chronic like uh, obstructive pulmonary disease, your baseline um yeah, pH is altered a little bit uh, just because the way that you have, you know, um, gas exchange in your body and the way that your kidneys are are functioning, um, that is, that's going to be developed over time. So you might be more alkalytic. You might be living at a 7.6 or you might be living at a 7.3. Uh, but again, that takes a long, long time and people are generally have some type of chronic illness. So again, that's not anything to strive for. Um, and it's certainly nothing that you're going to correct by, by ingesting with a little bit of alkaline uh, water. And I think what's important to note, it's really, really important to note, to note is because of for, because like acute changes can put you in the ICU, the, the bodies, the kidneys and lungs in particular do an, an extraordinary job making sure that you're staying in this narrow window, right? And then to your point about, okay, just because you're ingesting something doesn't mean that that's going to be metabolized in such a way that it's going to make your your blood pH. That's another important point that I think we need to make is when we're talking about this number 7.4, that's referring to our blood pH, right? And, and we can actually measure that. You can get a venous gas where we draw it from your veins or an arterial blood gas where we do, typically do it from a radial artery or femoral artery, something like that, typically radial. Um, and we can really get the pH. Um, but every single organ has their own specific pH, right? The stomach, for instance, where most of the things have your you know, first pass, um, that is a, is a pH of about two. So if you're gonna put a slightly more alkalotic or basic water inside, when it's get to an environment where the pH is two, what do we think is gonna happen? Is it just directly going, unless we're putting IV alkaline water, I'm not sure. I imagine somebody is doing that after, I, you know, uh, hopefully mm-hmm. nobody listened to that and like, that's <laughs> gonna be my, my hack to that. But, but I'm willing to bet that there's some crazy person out there who, who's figured this out. And so, you know, I think, um, that's that's failure number one to really understand that just because um, you know you're putting something in your body, it's going you're gonna get exactly what it's like a one to one, right? And we know that's not the case because there there's a multi step yeah. process. In fact, there's hundreds and thousands of enzymatic processes that are happening that 
you know, what you put in your body doesn't ultimately come out to be absorbed and, and ultimately excreted from your body. Absolutely. Cool. So I kind of want to delve into the research, right? Because I don't think we can have this talk without backing it up. And so, you know, I'll, I'll link the, the paper to our show notes, but one of the claims, right, is that alkaline water hydrates you more. That's just what the marketers like to say, which is why they're selling in the convenience stores. And that couldn't be true. That's just not true. Um, if you look at actual urine samples, yes, you'll see like higher um, cations, like we mentioned, like urinary magnesium, urinary calcium, all these things in your urine. And again, you probably have to be drinking a lot of alkaline water for that to show up. Um, but no, it does not necessarily hydrate you more. The other things that I found really interesting were, um, so when we talk about diet now, alkaline diet, a lot of this just means fruits and veggies, right? Mm -hmm. Because these are the things that are going to be holding those minerals, right? Minerals is the key word, which everyone's like, oh, mineral deficiencies. Yeah, absolutely. So back in the day when we had better soil, um, there would be, we would measure the ratio of potassium to sodium, right? So everything in our body likes kind of ratios, right? Like our salt, for instance, or sodium in our body is in a ratio with the water. Um, so the same thing is with potassium and sodium, especially with intracellular processes. Um, so the ratio back in the day used to be like a 10 to one potassium to sodium. And now it's actually flipped. It's one to three. So most of our foods are actually having more sodium than potassium. So even though we think we might be eating that alkaline diet, we're not eating as if it were 50 years ago. And it's crazy. I actually, I don't know if this is true. I heard this anecdote, but like eating one apple in the 1950s to get that much nutritious value, you would have to eat like 10 of those apples today. Like that's how much our soil just has been depleted over time from proper nutrients. So that was one of the things they talked about. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, that's exactly what uh, the proponents of regenerative farming um, talk about, or regenerative agriculture, mm -hmm. right? That's how, how critical that is because uh, these you have this dead soil yeah. and, and they're not nutritious. So when you're growing these crops, um, you know, it's become a real issue. And, and like, you know, I've been listening to a lot about, a lot of folks recently talk about monocropping and how that's killing us and, and the reasons to eat one way versus another. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, sorry, that that's a, a different different day, different discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So that point, that, that's point number one. So maybe why we should incorporate an alkaline diet. Point number two is that majority of this world, I, I don't know the exact number, I've heard it's above 70%, is magnesium, magnesium deficient. And so trying to get magnesium in will help. I mean, magnesium is in so many different processes, enzymatic processes, um, that it is honestly vital, you know, when it comes to sleep, when it comes to your muscle, just so many different things. So including an alkaline diet can help restore that. And then number three, which I found very interesting, which there's actually a lot of papers on, is about chemotherapy and eating alkaline. So chemotherapy, right, using these harsh chemicals or harsh drugs, sometimes work better in different media and media meaning the like solution the solvent that it needs to be in the buffer so some chemotherapeutic agents work better in an acidic environment whereas some actually work better in a basic or alkaline environment and so there's there's these papers that talk about hey if you're taking on these chemo agents maybe you should be eating like this now again coming back to what does it really change our body and our ph not really, but is there some sort of effect that we might be able to see? I don't know. So this is kind of where it gets a little controversial. But those are at least three ways that an alkaline diet can help you in some way, according to this paper. The one negative, if, if I'll, I'll just finish right here real quick, one negative is that too much alkaline can cause kidney stones. And this is just well known, right? If you're getting too much calcium, um, too much of the minerals, uh, that can just cause buildup and you can get kidney stones. Yeah, and what's important to note about like all the things that you're mentioning, okay, well, first off, uh, yeah, it's a quick side note, um, it's interesting how literally everything that we talk about comes back to, hey, if you just eat more fruits and vegetables, then good things are going to happen. <laughs> um, it's just, it's so interesting. Um, but, you know, uh, so very much so like the alkaline water, again, a lot of them are going to have many of these minerals that added that you referenced before, right? So the question that becomes, okay, well, is it yeah. the higher pH of the solution or is it the actual minerals that are addressing some type of deficiencies that you alluded to, right? Or, um, you know, are those that are making you feel a bit better? Like, we, again, we talked about magnesium being a therapeutic for so many different ailments. Again, some chronic issues, like for 
you know, sleep, uh, chronic uh, insomnia or uh, depression or anxiety and things of that nature, um, cramping, you know, we often tend to use that as a supplement. I do really want to caution mm-hmm. here and tell people, you know, just because you threw that stat out there about the magnesium, I don't want people to think, well, okay, well, I'm going to start oh, just yeah. supplementing with magnesium because, again, like everything else in our body, it's very tightly regulated. And yes, if right. you're insufficient or deficient, that's going to have problems. You can't overdo it though. And again, that will that will also buy somebody a ticket to the ICU. Um, so again, we have to be very, very careful. And this is there. why you need to work with a professional when you're doing this. Anyways, disclaimer aside. So again, going back to just because an alkaline diet, which really is fruits and vegetables, you know, again, it's hard to tease out that whether it's the minerals, the vitamins, the not putting processed foods, which tend to be more acidic, not overdoing it on the protein and the, the fatty foods and things of that nature, um, which can be more acidic, not going crazy on the teas and the coffee and things of that nature, uh, which again, in large amounts can be more detrimental than beneficial. Is that what's doing giving us the benefit? you know, Or is it the higher pH value? Yeah. I mean, that's what's really, really challenging to tease out. But it doesn't equate to buying water that is just priced at astronomical amounts, right? Like, I don't know, like $3, $4, $5 a bottle when it's just tea, yeah. tap water. Um, and it's not really shown, it does, we don't have any hard data to prove that it, it is gonna be more beneficial. There is some literature out there. Like, I mean, when you do a go do a PubMed search, and I was really, um, really fascinated to find this out. I mean, there are a lot of people who've actually asked this question and looked at this question in different aspects, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's longevity benefits, whether performance benefits. Um, in fact, a study comes to mind published last year. I think it was one of the, like a journal of human kinetics or something where they looked at 12 individual, 12 healthy um, college age individuals. And, and they showed that alkaline, um, uh, alkaline water versus just regular water um, tended to improve anaerobic performance, right? Um, and, and so that was interesting. Yep. But again, in that study, if I recall correctly, uh, one, it was only like 12 individuals. But secondly, what, when they check lactic acid um, or, or uh, pH lactate at resting and post-exercise, it, it, it really didn't make a difference, right? So when you're checking these blood markers, that's not, but for some reason, it seems to, to help. Now, that's not new though, right? Sodium bicarb mm-hmm. has been used as an ergogenic aid for <laughs> decades right the problem is people don't tolerate it especially in endurance athletes like cyclists and stuff like that people don't tolerate it because it has massive gastrointestinal uh, issues again because you don't want to be just taking baking soda and putting it in water and ingesting it like bad things are probably going to happen so you know there's interesting stuff about there oh out there for this but again, does that mean that we should be paying 3x, 4x, 5x, 10x, uh, whatever, astro- you know, just asinine prices people are charging for this? I'm not really sure. I guess the question becomes, is there harm? Yeah. Is there harm to do things? You talked about the kidney stones, right? That's one. Uh, but yeah. what's the harm if somebody wants to take alkaline water? I think that's the main thing. It's really the kidney stones. It's really just overdoing it. And, I, I, you know, I, I don't think you're going to change your pH. I mean, chronically, maybe. Right? There's a lot of talk of people using it for reflux. That's still up in the air. Yeah. But that's the thing. I don't think there's much harm, right? So a lot of the videos you watch and things are like, hey, if you want to try it, go ahead and try it, right? So like when I break down the data and I look at this, I'm like, hmm, it's all a gray area, right? Like taking an element, for example, right? right? I guess you can call that, you know, alkaline, but I'm not going to be taking five packets of like element in a day, right? Whereas some people are just drinking alkaline water throughout the whole day yeah. rather than just one, you know, one eight ounce glass, sure, you might feel a little bit better or something. Um, But that's where I think, you know, people need to dial it back just because it's good for you once doesn't mean it's good for you, you know, over and over and over. And and for those who don't know, you're referring to a a solution, a a hydrating solution, powder form, LMNT, which both of us do like. Um, But uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's the only thing that I can truly think of is the financial harm. I know we talked, we threw out the kidney stones thing that out there, but again, the amount of water I think people would have to ingest um, in order to be able to get that, I, I couldn't even imagine, right? I couldn't even imagine how much water they would have to take to be able to get there. Unless, again, they had some underlying chronic illnesses and stuff and they're more susceptible to this, right? That's a different story. Hard to right. really know. Genetics, yeah. You know. But then that also begs the question is when they pick up the, these uh, these alkaline water solutions, right? And they go to like Whole Foods or really wherever and they're like, okay, our mm-hmm. alkaline water. I think most of them will advertise it's going to be anywhere between 8 to 10 or 8 to 11 in that range, right? You t- right? Yep. Regular water is going to be in the, yep. in the seven ballpark. Um, mm-hmm. is, is it truly that? 
right? Who's taking like a pH meter out and actually testing that? Um, I, I, re- I listened to a Z-Dog MD <laughs> show recently. He was talking about one of the waters on the back. It gives a little disclaimer. It says, oh, you know, you can't really use re- regular pH strips for that because they're not accurate, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you need to check a pH meter. And he's like, okay, well, so that's like, trust this placebo when you get it as 8.5, you know? I just found that to be really funny. Yeah. So so that's the other point. It's like, okay, are you going to pay $5 to really know that you're not maybe getting what you even think you might be getting, which might not even be beneficial at all? I don't know that that money could be spent elsewhere, yeah. like buying five avocados Absol- or something, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And I think the biggest takeaway for me, right, like with when when it comes to our assessment portion here, is that it comes out an alkaline diet's eating fruits and veggies. Like, imagine if I just said eat fruits and veggies versus I'm saying eat alkaline. Like, you know, it's that buzzword that people are like, oh yeah, I got to do that. Like, if that's what it takes to get people to eat eat fruits and veggies, um, but it's nothing new, right? Like, it's not anything new. It's just people rebranding it, taking a sexy word, and uh, marketing it. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's funny to me. So, what's your plan? What are you, um, you know, after this discussion? What do you want the audience to know that you're going to be doing? Um, you know, I think. Uh, nothing new, uh, same old message, but you know, repetition is a mother, mother learning, they say at least. Um, and so just get more fruits and vegetables, like all the more reason. It it did give me, you know, when I was doing research for this, um, it did make me reconsider because I do eat a lot of acidic foods, right? And I was like, okay, well, it's interesting. Some of the foods that um, I didn't even know have a higher acidic values. So when you look at on the uh, pH scale, particularly, we know that a lot of different meats do uh coffee of course does we know that I'm, my coffee consumption needs to definitely be dialed back which i'm actively working on a little bit challenging um so it made me reconsider okay maybe i need to offset right again this goes back to our very first pn when we talk about you know meat and cancer all that stuff is that so the studies will, will report that if you you know eat a, an equal amount of vegetables it could potentially offset some of the carcinogenic carcinogenic you know effects that it might have mm-hmm. right processed meats and so that holds true here as well, right? And so it can offset some of the yeah. acidic properties of meat. There is something that I actually learned about. It's called the PRAL. Uh, it's the, um, what's it called? It's the, uh, oh, uh, potential renal acid load. Every single food has yeah. that, right? And this is essentially what we talked about at the outset is just because you're ingesting a food, the way that your body processes it might be completely different in terms of the acid load it's going to have, right? So in terms of what the final pH after it's metabolized on your kidneys, that effect is going to be. And so interestingly, every single food that's out there, according to the you know, United States Department of Agriculture, has a PRAL or you know, potential renal acid load. Um, you can Google a chart on this if you want. Um, you know, I mean, there's a million different variations of that out there uh, to get a sense of, okay, well, you know, what kind of, or what are my routine you know, mainstays a part of my diet and is my potential renal acid load really high? Um, and you, wait, again, what you'll note though, I'll give you a quick cheat sheet is if you eat more vegetables, it's going to be low. You know, if you eat less vegetables, then it's going to be really, really high because everything else is going to have a high load. So, so again, going back to balance, pendulum, coming back to the middle, um, I think that yeah. that's the name of the game. Absolutely, man. Yep. So my three big takeaways from here is one, I'm not going to go out of my way to buy alkaline water. I'm not going to go out of my way to make my water more alkaline or get a filter. Two, um, I'm already already eating an alkaline diet, right? If I have a salad a day, I'm getting more fruits and veggies. That's that's going to be taking care of my mineral consumption. You know, of course, I'll add in some element packets. You know, if I'm doing some cardio or something. And the third thing is like I'm not going to avoid acidic, right? Because like if I'm just saying, hey, I'm not going to have any acidic foods. Well, there goes the protein, right? Which we just talked about. Um, and we know that acidic foods that contain protein can help you with muscle building, which will help you with longevity, right? So everything comes down to a balance. Um, and so I'm definitely not a fan of, you know, op- you know, living my life just in terms of one way or the other. Um, so that's why I'm not a big fan of this whole alkaline fad. Yep. But listen, if, if, you, if somebody tells me that I want to get it because I love the taste of it and it makes them feel good, then, and I've got lots of extra money to spare, then I would say, by all means, go for it. And you can donate to my student loan charity as well. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, That's right. <laughs> but, uh, but hopefully, guys, that was helpful. Um, you know, if, if anybody has any thoughts or any questions, um, as always, we welcome feedback. We welcome input. Um, it's medredefined at gmail.com. Or you can hit, up us, uh, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, 
um, LinkedIn, really, we're, we're everywhere. Right, Josh? Yeah, sounds good. We are everywhere. All right, man, time to get some water in there. <laughs> Tap water. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Medicine Redefined. Now, if you know somebody who has been talking about alkaline water and alkaline diets and hopping onto the trend, be sure to send them this episode. It only takes a second. And as always, everything in this podcast is for educational purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine and we are not providing medical advice. No physician-patient relationship is formed and anything discussed in this podcast does not represent the views of our employers. We recommend that you seek the guidance of your personal physician regarding any specific health-related issues. And if there are any topics, and I mean any topics, that you want Altamash and I to discuss on our future Progress Note episodes, please be sure to reach out to us. Have an awesome week. Thank you.